Oh, have you found rest and worship this morning? Amen. God is good. God is good. Um, I am just, I got to say that I'm just pumped this morning. I've been wrestling with this uh, topic for, for a few weeks, and um, I'm just excited to, to get into it this morning. But before we do, uh, my name is Aaron Florian, and I'm the youth pastor here at The Point, for those who don't know me. And uh, I'm excited to be in front of you once again to preach, and um, just really honored, in fact. And, um, but before we get started, you know, I feel like it's my duty as a youth pastor here, and really just my privilege to just kind of update you on where we've been um, with Crave Student Ministries here at The Point. And um, back in September, we had started a capital campaign, a campaign to raise funds so that we could kind of give the ministry a facelift, um, update our space, you know, buy equipment and that sort of thing, but also um, train and, um, and influence volunteers. And, and so phase one has been a lot of our renovations and projects, um, but uh, nonetheless, this, um, this has started. And uh, in September, we started the, um, the campaign, right? And our, we had received $50,000 worth of pledges from you all. And I'm pleased to report that we're up to about $33,000 raised since, since September and received. So first of all, just thank you. Um, that is incredible. God is doing some amazing things in and through you. Um, so, so we just are so thankful for you in that. And uh, so, like I said, we're using um, more majority of the funds, not majority, but a good amount of funds right now to get our space to a place that's, that's usable, that's inviting, and that's um, purposeful for us. And, and in doing that, we've got a video here that'll kind of show you um, some, of our, uh, some of our spaces um, and how they've been updated, um, have some previous pictures of what our space looks lo looked like, and um, this is kind of what it was. It was a hangout space. Um, a, a pretty good one too, but um, really what our students were missing was a place um, that we could retreat, a place that where we could go to purposefully teach and to escape, right, and to allow there be space in, in their lives for God to speak in. And, and so um, this is what it looks like now. We've done a lot of paint, um, put up some, some wood and metal and all that kind of good stuff to decorate it, but, um, you know, uh, remove flooring and uh, put in new lighting and of course a, a, a ton of new um, you know electronics and media and that sort of thing and so this space has really um, been a blessing to us and it is a blessing for us uh, because with Crave Student Ministries our goal is to create a hunger in students to serve God and we do that um, through two ministries our fuel um, which is our high school ministry um, based on equipping students who are in high school for a lifelong service to God. And um, the problem is there's a lot of things in high school that, that are different from any other stage of life. And so we play games that'll stretch their minds and, you know, kind of warp their realities for a little bit, um, you know, and maybe put a little danger in their lives. I don't know, something. Um, try, try not to do too much. But, um, you know, the high school student really views life as a philosopher, trying to gain as much knowledge as possible so that they can put that to use throughout the rest of their life. And so we are really um, engaging them and trying to connect them to God in that way. And through Boost Ministry, our middle school ministry, we are creating a foundation um, for our students, a foundation of God's truths, um, ones that they can build upon later, ones that they can challenge and use to view the world. Um, and so we've got a great group of middle school and high school students, and, and it's really a blast. And um, we are really focused and centered in both of our ministries on small group models, um, connecting our students with an adult who is ready to help them tackle kind of difficult life questions, difficult life topics, and allow them to have a space and freedom to wrestle with, with their faith, to wrestle with questions that they have. We don't assume that any student... Um, is a true believer in God or even has it all figured out, but we present them with the truth and allow them space to tackle and wrestle with that and crave. And so we are just excited about that. Um, we do a lot of games and, and things that kind of um, help to create a community, but, um, you know, whether it's through Frisbee dodgeball or whether it is through, you know, um, some uh, bear hunt games, um, kind of taking the lid off of, off of some of these, but um, well, no matter what it is, uh, we use everything we do 
to help connect students to adults who are going to live relationally with them, who are going to uh, live out the gospel in front of them and encourage them to do the same. And, and that's what our goal is because, because there's nothing that creates a hunger in students more um, than being able to catch that vision and fire from somebody else and to figure out how they fit into God's purpose. And that's overall what we have for them and what are, we are all about. And so we're excited and, and, and I'm thankful, church, for you. I'm cha- thankful for a church that is um, pouring into our students, that is excited about, about setting them up for success and, and pointing them towards a future in which God has so many great purposes. And I've, I've seen it. I've seen these students, I've seen what they can do, and I've seen some of what God has planned for them, and it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. What you need to know, church, is that we're winning, that we're winning with our students, and that with your help and support, we want to win with a lot more. We want to win at a greater level, and, uh, and we're just thankful for that. So let me pray this morning um, for our service. Thank you, Lord, uh, just for this time together this time to set aside to hear from you. And I pray right now, Lord, that as we lean into you, that you would speak new truth into our lives and that, that no matter what, when we leave today, forever we can be changed because we met with the Savior of the world, with the God of all creation who desires to have a personal relationship with us. So speak to us, Lord, and allow our hearts to be opened and listen to you. In your name we pray, amen. All right, so we are speaking and kind of going to have a little discussion this morning about the idea of rest. And what you need to know about me before we get started with that is that I, was, I have been, I am, I always will be that kid who doesn't stop, right? And you might say, Aaron, stop what? Yes, everything, anything. I just don't stop. I never have. I was always, you know, making up backyard games, playing sports you know, playing video games, uh, finding out what happens when you pour this on that, you know, how to get that movie explosion in my garage, like not good things. Don't, don't take my examples. But, but that was me, right? I was always like active and wanting to figure out and I was curious. And, uh, and even in the times when I had to be structured, even in the times when I knew I had to kind of sit still and behave and, and not, you know, be a a wild man. Um, (laughs) <laughs> even then, I learned ways to still be active, right? Like, I could bounce my knee. Like, no one's going to yell at me for that, typically. Um, or, you know, I'd drum on stuff, or I'd hum. Or I got really good at making, like, really annoying noises with my mouth. You can ask my parents. I won't show you. I won't show you. I'll spare you from that this morning. But, but I got good at it, believe me. Um, but no matter what it was, I was always active. I was that kid that was just full of energy and running around. And I feel like I'm still that way today. But the truth is about me Um, that it goes deeper than just my physical actions. Um, For me, it's always gone much deeper because it includes my thoughts. It includes those times when I'm still, when I'm not doing anything. There's always something that I was thinking about. There's always some fear that was in my mind. There was always some hope, some dream, some vision that I was longing for or something. And so even to my core, I've always just been active. And the problem with that is God has convicted me, especially of late, that I think I have had an unhealthy view or really no view of what rest is supposed to be in my life. I think that God has created rest for me and that is something that I have never allowed to be an importance in my life. It's always taken a back seat. And the problem is, is I think that our culture, I think that we as a people are a little too like me. I think there's too many times in our life when we're just, we're just too active. There's too much going on and, and we don't have a balance of understanding what rest is and why it was created for us. Do you guys know that God created rest for you? He created you to have rest. He created you to rest. Not all the time. Don't get excited. Um, but he created you to rest. In Genesis 2, 3, it tells us this, God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all of his work of creation. God created rest. But the problem is, is that I think in some ways we've kind of accepted a counterfeit version of rest. I feel like this is kind of the symbol that we've allowed rest to be in our lives right here. Any Netflix addicts in the house? Yep. Amen. No? No? Maybe we shouldn't celebrate that in church. Um, but, but we do, don't we? This, is, this has become a symbol for us in what rest 
should be for our lives. And, and, and so we pursue that. It's like, oh man, I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling overworked. So this is what I'm going to go to, right? I'm going to go, you know, just veg a little bit and, and get, get me some Netflix action. Um, maybe even read. I don't know. Who does that anymore? I don't, whatever. But um, <laughs> some people are going to be upset with me after the service for saying that. Um, but no matter what, we need to know that God created rest, and we need to know why he created it. And um, like I said, the problem is, is, is we've accepted a counterfeit. And, and the truth is that God created rest for the Israelites, and, and he really created rest as a, as a gift. And you see, rest is a physical word for us, but yet it takes on a greater importance when we understand its meaning. Rest, the word itself, is not, is not anything significant. When I say, hey, you guys need to rest more, you're, you're gonna, nobody's going to walk out this morning of the church like waving their hands like, hallelujah, he said rest, right? Like nobody's going to say that because it's, it's a normal word. But we have to understand the importance. We have to understand its purpose. And so when God gave rest to the Israelites, he did so for two purposes. He did so so that they would stop working and so that they would remember. So that they would remember all that God had done for them. From the time of Abraham all the way through the exodus from Egypt, even now while they were in the desert, they can remember all the times that God had met their needs, all the times that God had showed up for them in the past. And so rest for them was supposed to be stopping and remembering. And for the Israelites, rest was a way for them to really abandon their labors. It was a way for them to abandon what labored them. It was a way for them to be set free from their worry, and it was a way for them to be refreshed in knowing that the God who had already done all those things for them was still working in their lives, even though they were in the desert, even though they were waiting to be delivered to the promised land, God was still working in their life. So the question is, God, what is, what is this rest supposed to be for us? What is this rest supposed to do? Why did you create it? I understand that, 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 that you made it for us to rest and to remember you, but what is it supposed to accomplish in my life? And I think we find that in Exodus chapter 31. Um, this uh, 12 through 17 are the verses, and um, it's a little long, so bear with me, but it says this. Then the Lord gave these instructions to Moses. Tell the people of Israel, be careful to keep my Sabbath day. For the Sabbath is a sign of the covenant between me and and you from generation to generation. It is given so you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. You must keep the Sabbath day, for it is a holy day for you. And anyone who desecrates it must be put to death. Anyone who works on that day will be cut off from the community. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day must be a Sabbath day of complete rest, a holy day dedicated to the Lord. And anyone who works on the Sabbath must be put to death. How many of you whose boss asked you to do overtime this week want to bring this verse in on Monday and be like, I don't think I can do it. I might die. Like, this is not going to be good. No. Do you guys understand what that word holy means? When, when he says that it should be a holy day dedicated to the Lord, it means that it should be set apart. That it should be set apart for God's use. See, God designed Sabbath and rest in our lives to be a space that, that is set apart solely for him. So that he could not only use us, but use that space in our lives to, to change things for us, to help us, to, to really transform us. So let's read on here and see what it says in the rest of Exodus 31. It says, The people of Israel must keep the Sabbath day by observing it from generation to generation. This is a covenant obligation for all time. It is a permanent sign of my covenant with the people of Israel. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. But on the seventh day he stopped working. And don't miss this. He was refreshed. You see, God created all of us to rest. But in order for us to rest, we must be refreshed. How many of you have, have embraced this, this symbol in your life of rest? How many of you have taken a nap, you know, went and just kind of chilled and watched Netflix, went to sleep one night and woke up and felt no different, felt no better, felt no more refreshed or relaxed than you did when you started? I mean, we've all been there, haven't we? 
It's because there's something broken in just this idea of rest for us. There is something that is unfulfilling because it is not what God intended solely for our lives. It is not the way that God intended us to rest because it does not achieve the purpose of what rest was supposed to be for us. How many of us embrace this idea of rest in our life, that that rest should be refreshing, that rest should be something that makes me new, The problem is, is I think that um, we need to realize that our rest is much less about our physical um, actions, much less about our physical stopping, and much more about being refreshed by the God who is asking us to have space in our lives that he can interact with us, to have space in our lives where he can use us. There's this word in the Hebrew uh, dictionary, in the Hebrew um, language, used for rest called nuach. And it's used quite a, bit, quite a few times in the Old Testament. Um, and like I said, the word rest itself does not have much significance to us. But the cool thing about God is that um, really even in the ordinary things, he can really speak some extraordinary truth into our lives. And that's what he did to me when I was kind of doing some research and trying to find out more about, about what God's version of rest is for me. And this word nuach um, kind of changed the game a little bit because some of its definitions w- for me were unexpected. Because the word means um, to rest, to idle, makes sense, to calm, okay. But how about lay down? How about put aside? How about rid themselves of? How about forsake? How about abandon? How about set free? How about space? Refresh. You see, it's clear to me through this that God has been using this to help me understand that rest for us should be much less about what we stop doing and much more about what we need to create space from. The places in our life that we need to have the space so that God can enter in and truly refresh us. Because the problem is, is we, can, we, we understand the stop working part. But even when we stop working, I'm willing to bet that there is plenty in this room today that when you stop, when you finally get to that place, there are a million thoughts, worries, fears, hopes, dreams, insecurities, and any other <laughs> thought you might dream up that are plaguing you whenever you engage in this. Maybe they plague you on a daily basis. Maybe it's only when when certain things in your life come up, but no matter what, I'm willing to bet that there's plenty in here who are struggling with rest because of that very issue. Rest isn't restful. This is just an opportunity for me to, to just think about life, for me to just worry and stress and fear. But God created rest so that we could have space from all of that so that we could be set free from those things, so that we could put aside a little time, find a little space in our lives that he could not only refresh us, but give us rest. So the question is, how does that happen for us? How do we get to that point where we're finally refreshed by God? And I think that happens for us in Deuteronomy 12.9. In the same way it happened for the Israelites who are in the desert waiting to find God's rest, wandering for years, hoping that someday there's going to be a place that God wants us to be, that we're finally going to fulfill that purpose in our lives. And when God, in Deuteronomy 12, 9, when God talks about the promised land, Canaan, he talks about it as a place of rest. He talks about it as an inheritance as a special gift, as a special possession. You see, where God is giving you rest is in your inheritance, in your gifts, in your abilities, in your passions that he has placed in your life unique, uniquely and purposefully. Our brother Lamoris Crawford was here last week and he told us that all of us are unique. Out of millions of people on the planet, none of us have the same fingerprints. That's how unique we are. And better yet, none of us have the same gifts and abilities in the same context made for the same purpose because we were all made 
in God's image to be unique and to fulfill his purposes. He's created purpose for every single one of us. And so where you will find rest, where you will find refreshment is in that promised land of the gifts and abilities that he's given you because in his purpose is where we are refreshed. In his purpose is where we can be rested. In his purpose is where we find rest for our souls. Are you hearing me, church? Because I think like me, there's some this morning that need to abandon some things in their life. I think, like me, there's some that need to be set free from the worries and doubts and fears that are just plaguing them on a daily basis. And I think, like me, there's probably at least one person in here this morning that needs to be refreshed in knowing that the God who has already done everything for them, that the Jesus who hung himself on a cross in love to set you free from sin, to set you free from the mundane things in life that seek to steal your joy, to steal your passion, has done so so that you can be refreshed in him and that his gifts and abilities and the inheritance that he's given you has been done for a purpose so that you can be filled with the passion of the Holy Spirit and ultimately achieve the purpose of his will. Are you hearing me this morning, church? If you want to be refreshed and find rest for your souls, we need to lean into those gifts and abilities that God has given us. Because there will never be anything more refreshing in your life when the Holy Spirit is fueling you with passion and desire to achieve that will through what he's already given you and what he's already done. And it's going to be insane. You hear me? It's going to be awesome. But we need to have faith to lean into those gifts and abilities. We need to have faith that our purpose is is not to, to, to keep running the rat race of working for the weekend so that we can finally get to that love seat, we can finally get to that couch and watch some Netflix for a little bit of joy before we have to go back to it. Lamoris told us somewhere around 80%, I think it was, of adults are are dissatisfied with their jobs. That like, I think your your chances for a heart attack raise 35% when you go to work on Monday. That's not what God created. That's not why God created you. You already have gifts, passions, and abilities that God is wanting to use. Not to survive, not to just exist, but to thrive. Jesus' (laughs) sacrifice on the cross was not simply so that we could be set free from sin, but so that we could fulfill God's purposes in our life. Because Jesus said this, He said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, church. I'm going to ask the band to come back up this morning because I want to create some space for us here today. I want to create some space for us to find a little rest, for us to find a little refreshment. I want to create some space so that we can allow God to use us in the ways that he's created us to. Because maybe there's some here this morning that um, you're right in that boat where it's like, man, I have no idea. God, I'm looking at my life and I see nothing that you've given that you want me to use. So maybe this morning you need to ask him to show you. Maybe some of you this morning are in the place where you're like, Aaron, I'm hearing you because God is working that in my life right now. I'm fueled with his passion and I'm excited for what he's doing and what he's calling me to do. And that's awesome. But the problem is sometimes we can look at our life and, and see nothing. See nothing of significance. And those are the times when we need to lean into one another, where we need to lean into this body, where we need to lean into some others who are in tune with what God has created us to do so that we can speak into one another's life and love and say, you know, God has given you these gifts and these abilities and they're not by coincidence, they're not by accident. Maybe that's what you need to pursue. 
what would it look like, church, if we as a community, as we have a, as a people, we're able to embrace this in our lives? What would it look like if all of us, instead of waking up tomorrow morning <laughs> tired, exhausted, and not ready for the work week, were woken up with passion, woken up feeling refreshed, from our time spent with the Lord, woken up feeling renewed by remembering that the God who had done everything for us is fueling us with passion and has given us things to do that we are excited to fulfill throughout the week. What would that look like, church? What would that look like in your job? Better yet, what would that look like in your family? You were made for too special a purpose to not not be refreshed by rest in your life, to not be renewed by what God is trying to do in and through you. But it takes us a little bit of leaning in. So that's what we're gonna do here this morning. We're gonna sing in a moment, and uh, the altars are open. We've got time here in space. So um, I want you to come. I want you to come if you need to come and pray and, and seek the Lord, seek his understanding about this topic in your life. And I want you, if, if you're the type that's like, I, I don't even know where to start, we're here to pray with you. Myself, Joel, and, and many others in this congregation would be more than willing to help you. But my fear and, and the thing that I would just dread is for someone who's feeling defeated, someone who's feeling empty this morning, someone who's feeling like there's nothing else I need more in the world right now than just a little piece from God to walk out of those doors and never to, to lean into what God is asking you to lean into this morning. So as we sing, do what you need to do, find some space here, and allow God to refresh you. Because we're just going to be still for a moment. We're going to create some space for God's purposes in our life here this morning. So I invite you to lean in and sing with us this morning.